Hello again. It seems that for me the Christmas came couple months earlier. Although Santa is still on Bahamas drinking Pepsi and Christmas tree is still growing in the forest, I've got a toy which I was dreaming about for a long time. Say hi to Visbard, visual system for browsing, analysis and retrieval of data. But before I will let you play with it, I want to speak about current space weather events. It seems that the most interesting activity is taking place on Bartle's Cosmic Ray page, where we can see some serious laser shootout and attack of the dots. I think that it can be the source of all the disturbances on Schumann Resonance Monitor. Okay, enough of the boring graphs. Time to deal with some more interesting data. I'm sure that a lot of you didn't understand completely what I meant by talking about reversed magnetic orientation of Earth. So let's use Visbart to watch closer at the impact which triggered the G3 geomagnetic storm last time. Just as before, during some interesting space weather events, I requested a run of CCMC model to look closer at the unusual geomagnetic activity. This is the impact which raised that KP index to 7. But before I will move further, I need to show you a movie which explains nicely the mechanics of magnetosphere and shows how the negative BZ magnetic component triggers geomagnetic storms. Heliophysics is the study of the Sun and its interactions with Earth and the solar system. Solar wind streams from the Sun carrying energetic charged particles. The Earth is protected from these particles by its magnetosphere. The Earth's rapidly spinning liquid metal core generates a magnetic field similar to a bar magnet with a north and south pole. This field forms a magnetic shield. NASA's satellite observations have confirmed that this protective shield is always in place, but the solar wind causes it to change in size and shape. The pressure of the solar wind flattens the nose of the magnetosphere and drags the field lines into a tail. A bow or shock wave forms upstream, much like a boat moving through water, and most of the onrushing charged particles are diverted around the outer boundary of the magnetosphere called the magnetopause. The inner magnetosphere is composed of three populations of charged particles that are trapped in the Earth's magnetic field. These particles move in circular motions, or gyrate, around the field lines but rarely interact with each other. The plasmasphere is comprised of low energy particles that drift up from the ionosphere, forming a sphere-like reservoir of very cold but fairly dense plasma and co-rotate with the Earth. The ring current is the second population of particles and is comprised of medium energy particles that drift around the Earth, with protons drifting in one direction and electrons in the opposite direction. The third population consists of high energy particles that are trapped in two regions called the Van Allen radiation belts. These particles move along the field lines toward the poles until they are reflected back, creating a bouncing movement. Particles with a high enough velocity along the magnetic field will follow the field lines to the poles and enter the upper atmosphere. Charged particles from the sun leak into the magnetosphere over the northern and southern magnetic poles and travel to the magnetotail, adding to a reservoir called the plasma sheet. Particles can also enter during magnetic reconnection. When the polarity of the solar wind is opposite to that of the magnetosphere, 
The magnetic field lines of the incoming plasma will connect with the field lines of the magnetosphere. This reconnection is an explosive process that catapults charged particles into the magnetosphere. Solar storms on the sun can eject solar energetic particles and energy toward the Earth. The particles can enter the Earth's magnetosphere and add to the particles in the plasma sheet reservoir. Associated magnetic energy can also pile up in the magneto tail until reconnection explosively releases energy and particles into the inner magnetosphere. A picture of a circulatory system emerges as the particles add to the ring current and radiation belts. This phenomenon is not well understood yet by scientists, but whenever reconnection occurs, an explosive burst of plasma results. This ultimately disrupts Earth's upper atmosphere, causing auroras and space weather events. NASA's upcoming Radiation Belt Storm Probes mission will help scientists better understand the processes in the radiation belts. The Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission will bring clarity to the process of magnetic reconnection. Together, these new missions will unveil secrets of the magnetosphere and space weather. This is how it works in theory. But how to explain a reconnection which took place when the BZ was positive and was just as strong as the BY? And which component was in this case more important? And this is the time to play with my new toy. I will use the CDF files generated during my requested model run. First, I show you the magnetosphere just before the shift of IMF orientation. BZ was at this time negative. CDF files generated by CCMC model allow me to use the magnetohydrodynamics simulation. I'm not sure if there is some other way to run the MHD. Sorry. First of all, this bird is a free Java application. You can have Christmas just as I have. This is the main screen. To create a scene, we have to add some data. This bird can use online data straight from NASA FTPs. Green bars mean that the data is in 100% recognized by the software. I've added the magnetic field readings from Timmy's D satellite. Data <coughs> recorded at the time when the craft is passing close to Earth is missing every day. Don't ask me why. Those are the readings from 13th of September. Storm was still taking place. But forget about Timmy's for a moment and let's look at the MHD simulation. <coughs> this is the magnetosphere just before the G3 storm started. BZ is negative and we can see a backside reconnection, a substorm is in progress. You can see the energy being transferred into deeper parts of magnetosphere. This is a clear influence of negative BZ component. But now let's look how we are being affected by the second IMF component, BY.
we are looking now at the magnetosphere from above. Nice view. And here the fun begins. This plane of view looks almost exactly as the Y cut. We have opposite magnetic poles placed on the equator and closed field lines which form radiation belts perpendicular to the common ones. On the XZ plane we can see that the backside reconnection unleashed much bigger energy than the one produced by particles entering through the polar cusps. But there is still one dimension, so let's look at X cut. Hmm. Hmm. On this image, colors represent the strength of magnetic field. This one shows the pressure. It is clear for me that it is the BY component, east-west orientation, which in this case caused the geomagnetic instability. This is the impact of sector boundary. And this is the response of magnetosphere for the northward orientation of IMF. Colors represent electric currents. Those blue cracks show where the plasma sphere was punctured. On the XY plane we can see how badly the inner magnetosphere was damaged, allowing particles to enter the ionosphere and cause auroras. This is how looked the magnetosphere at half past four on 13th of September. Magnetotail is visibly compressed because of the northward orientation of IMF. Blue areas show where the solar particles managed to pass through our defense. On the x cut view we can see that a big dose of particles managed to enter the ionosphere through northern polar cusp, but mostly at lower latitudes. Notice as well that the current ring didn't stop the solar wind from sending energetic particles over our equator.
but the most disturbing view can be seen on the XY plane. Blue streams show nicely where the solar particles punctured opposing magnetic field. Perpendicular Van Allen belts are defined clearly and there is even an additional cusp marked with the blue circle. To finish playing with the this part nicely, let's compare the MHD simulation with actual Timmy's readings. Those spirals seem to correspond perfectly for the perpendicular closed field lines. But much more important is the angle of the green arrows. The magnetic orientation of entire planet seem to point somewhere between north and east. This is placing the north magnetic pole somewhere in the middle of Canada. What is confirmed by the green arrow sticking out from the Hudson Bay. Those who watch my movies for a longer time know for sure that I started to talk about our magnetic poles being pulled to the equator a long time ago. My observations can be confirmed by the new polar cap potential monitor or by looking at the magnetic polarity of the Sun, which is already perpendicular to natural state. Thanks to one of my subscribers, it can be confirmed by scientific publication. I'll paste the link in description box. Although here the disturbances are explained by colliding galaxies and not planetary bodies. And this would be all for today. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.